So, uh, the announcements that I promised. So, Kurzweil 3000, I, I think some of you certainly will know, has been around since the mid-1990s. Uh, and prior to that, of course, if you go back to the mid-1970s, Kurzweil has a long storied history with reading technology for the blind and visually impaired. How many of you he have heard of or ever used a product called Bookwise? You seriously use Bookwise? Okay, that's one person beside myself. Are you raising a hand there in the middle table? Are you raising your hand? Okay. Well, thank you. I, no one calls me. No. No one calls me dear God. Just so you know. That's for the big guy up there. But thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Uh, so, Bookwise actually was the world's first PC-based literacy solution for individuals with dyslexia and it was made by Kurzweil, and it came out in 1992. And back then, I was in, in the UK, of course, representing Kurzweil, and I can tell you, I mean, I'm sure you weren't quite so bad over here, but over there, teachers were still of the mindset that dyslexia was a made-up, you know, thing. Uh, of course, we've all come a long way since then. Solutions like Kurzweil 3000 have evolved quite significantly since the, the mid-1990s. We're now at, if you're keeping track of the score and the number, we're now at version 13 for Windows, version 5 for Macintosh. We changed those numbers to 5 and 13 last autumn. Why did we do that? Well, we made a couple of announcements, some of which you've heard, and maybe some you haven't. I'll tell you what they are anyway. The first announcement that we made was that we were consolidating the license types. So if you've ever heard of the term professional, or learn station, or scan read, or read, forget all of that terminology. It's a product called Kurzweil 3000 that just happens to do everything that you need. It does scanning, virtual printing, all of that good stuff in every copy of Kurzweil that we now sell. And it's been that way since October of last year. The other thing that we changed, for any of you who have had experience with or have heard about our web license version, you perhaps know that that version has as a feature the universal library, which is essentially storage in the cloud. So you can take your curriculum, you can place it up on the internet, and what that means is that your students can be installing software at home, in school, doesn't really matter where. Anywhere that they have an internet connection, they can log in and access their curriculum from wherever they're at. It's pretty significant. The big thing, though, with our announcements last fall is that we added that same level of functionality to our Macintosh product. So Kurzweil 3000 for Mac, which actually is open uh, right here, uh, now has access to that same library. Now, you may be wondering, some of you, what this is all about. Does anybody know? It's a Firefly. So Firefly uh, is, our, is our newest product. Does anybody here care to share what Firefly is in a, in a single sentence? What is Firefly, anybody? Who's not in a gray shirt? <laughs> all right, I'll tell you. Firefly is our first 100% web-based literacy solution. Nothing to install, zero footprint, works in any browser, on your Mac, on your PC, the user interface is identical, the voices are identical. So for any of you, especially like me who are Mac users, that have been lamenting the fact that there have been disparity between the two types, no more. Okay, I'm gonna show you Firefly this evening. Uh, and by the way, that 30 pack of Kurzweil I was telling you about, it comes with Firefly, by the way. So you're gonna have the best of both worlds. Um, so actually, I was going to go to my browser. So actually, this is Firefly. So I have an internet connection on my, on my Mac. I have, I'm using Google, Google's Chrome browser to log in. This is a document that I actually retrieved from the Universal Library, from the cloud. And once I've got it open, I can go ahead and click on the Read button. A little bit. How much do you really know about the World Wide Web? The World Wide Web refers to all the websites in the world that people can visit using their computers. The internet is a network. So I'll pause it there. For any of you familiar with Kurzweil 3000, you might be saying, well, it doesn't look much like Kurzweil 3000. That was by design. This is a completely different product. So it's part of the Kurzweil family. We made it. But it has been designed to be extremely easy to use. 
Uh, right now, suffice to say that if you were to compare functionality between Kurzweil and Firefly, Kurzweil's here, Firefly's here. During the course of this year, what you're going to see is that disparity equalizing. And the functionality that's in Firefly will start to seem more and more like what you've known to be in Kurzweil. So you think about writing functionality, study skill functionality, things of that nature, is all going to find its way to the web. As far as the, the options are concerned, there's not a lot in there right now. One big thing, since we are on a smart board, is the ability to actually kind of, if you are working with younger students or individuals in a wheelchair or someone else that just can't reach to the top of the screen, you can move the UI to the bottom of the screen to make it more accessible. Speaking of access, access, and I was actually having a, a talk with Beth here from Montgomery County in Maryland, access and also universal access, more importantly, has been a cornerstone of our organization. We've been working with CAST actually for years. In fact, that Bookwise product that I mentioned, they helped design that program in conjunction with the engineers and product managers at Kurzweil way back when. So this notion of building something that can be used by everybody is something we feel very passionate about. So much so that when you start using Firefly, and by the way, any of you in the room tonight can go and sign up for a free trial, we have built in keyboard shortcuts for the things that you can do so that if you do have other assistive technology, or if you have someone using an IntelliKeys or switches or something that's going to interact with those keyboard shortcuts, we want to make sure they can use the same technology that anyone else is using in the classroom. It's a big, a big thing that was actually part of our development philosophy heading out. Let's just move this back to the top. So just a couple of other things to say. Um, you know, as far as the, uh, the options, let's leave this on the screen just for a little bit longer. So changing the way Kurzweil looks and feels, you know, is it highlighting a sentence at a time or a paragraph, things like that, that's still in there. Getting dictionary definitions, that's in there clearly. Uh, changing voices. There are four, four English voices. Three American English, one British English, that's the Bridget voice. And Violeta is a Latin American Spanish voice. We've got it there because you can actually open up Spanish documents with Firefly, just as you can with Kurzweil. You can also translate documents from English to Spanish and have that translation spoken out also. <coughs> so again, thinking about the all student mantra, it's not just working within special ed, right? There are lots of people out there, students, individuals, who struggle reading English at grade level. It's not always because they have dyslexia. So we've tried to think about all of these different types of disabilities as this product was developed. One of the great things, though, about being web-based, remember, nothing to install, which means you don't have to start bribing your IT department to help you when something changes, <laughs> is that anytime something new happens with Firefly, you've got it you will always have the latest and greatest version of the program. So you know, I mean, I, I, in fact, it's funny enough, we just met with Beth and she was talking about the fact they got like versions 10, 11, 12, you know. It's across the board and I'm sure some of you have similar stories. Now, with Firefly, so for example, just this past week they added highlighting, right? So this is the ability to go in and select a highlight pen and highlight main idea or supporting detail or whatever it might be. That was just there. So from one day to the next, our entire user base of Firefly customers went from one day not having highlighting to the next day having it. And so as we add this other functionality moving forward, this is what you can look forward to. So it's really, really exciting for us. Certainly, again, as we worked with our product advisory group, the big thing that people were telling us about was that challenge of working with your IT folks. And frankly, in this economy, when districts are looking at kind of making cuts in different areas, IT is an easy target because they figure you're not buying as much, whatever, so you just cut back on that. But meanwhile, you've got populations of students that you're trying to serve. So we think this is a good way of helping them. Um, so in any event, that's Firefly. You can sign up for a free trial of Firefly just by visiting the Kurzweil website. Uh, and again, it's free. You can you know, tell your friends about it. They can go there as well. Just sign up, start using it. Uh, any questions about Firefly? Yes? I can. So the zoom's right here. So I can just kind of drag, you know, make it bigger, smaller. Pretty simple. When it comes to digital content, uh, you know, with Firefly, the, the strategy here is that if you've got digital content, we want Firefly to be the solution that you use to read it. So whether that, I don't come right to your question, Matt. So whether that's reading a Kurzweil document or a PDF file or a DAISY file or whatever it is, 
you're going to just be able to open it up on Firefly. So those are things you can expect to see during the course of this year. Yes, ma'am. Right, so the question is whether you need Kurzweil if you own Firefly. It's a great question. So the short answer there is that presently, today, you would need Kurzweil because Firefly does not have the ability to open up files that are anywhere but our universal library. However, that's changing quickly. So I would expect possibly as early as this quarter, but honestly, we've got a lot of things we're working on simultaneously. But the expectation is you will have the ability to start opening files that are on your desktop, which means, in summary, that you won't need Kurzweil moving forward in order to use Firefly. Okay. How does Firefly work with Inspiration? Well, Inspiration is a separate program. Um, and uh, I mean, it's not something I've tried. I know what Inspiration is, of course. Um, Kurzweil 3000, of course, has its own version of that kind of level of functionality. Uh, you know, it's, it's on our list of things that we would like to see on the web. So I think what's likely is we'll, we'll probably see that at some point. How this, though, interacts with inspiration, I mean, there's nothing to stop you selecting, you know, I, I guess. I mean, right now, until we have a writing component where you can paste things in, I'm guessing it's not going to work that well. But, um, but Kurzweil 3000 certainly works perfectly well with it. Yeah. Any other questions on Firefly? Yes. So you said that eventually you won't need Kurzweil to, to use Firefly. So are you building in the scanning? capabilities within Firefly eventually? Uh, so I th let me, let me it's a great question. So uh, I'll paraphrase my question, to my answer or my statement before just a little bit. So when I talk about parity with Kurzweil, it's perhaps more accurate to say parity with the Learn Station. Okay. So I don't think scanning is going to find its way as an online web-based feature anytime soon. That said, when we talk about being able to support things like PDF files, we want, we're going to be giving you the ability to do that natively. So you will not need scanning or recognition to do that. There may be some kind of recognition that's going on in the background on the, the web server side, but that's going to be transparent to you. You'll just simply be opening up a file and it's going to start reading to you. Yeah. So, not, yeah. so kind of a yes, no answer. Yes? Is Firefly going to be accessible on mobile devices? So presently, uh, Firefly will run on any Android-based uh, device. And uh, as far as iPad is concerned, we're working on an iPad app. iPhone? Oh. It's too small. I don't think we're going to be doing that anytime soon. But iPad for sure. So you're asking me to clarify what I mean by you need Kurzweil. So on Firefly, when it comes to the documents that I am going to open, go back to the library. So here's my library of documents. So Firefly, uh, as standard, comes with the classic literature CD. So that's the 1,800 plus documents that we make available with Kurzweil. That's here. And then there's just our sample documents. But if I wanted to bring in my own content into Firefly right now, I would need to be in Kurzweil 3000. So let's go there right now. And if I have my document, I would go to the file menu and I would save to the universal library. And I would decide where I want to put this document. I'd save it. It's uploaded to the cloud. And then I'm out in Firefly. I'm downloading from the cloud. That's how you do it right now. Does that help explain it? Good. All right.